Hi, I'm Casey Lackey for Innovative Sugarworks, and today I'm going to show you guys how to make a sweet pea sugar paste flour using our one piece sweet pea cutter. I developed this so that you could make sweet peas very quickly, and if you once you get good at them, I think I could do about a hundred an hour. So there we go, and uh, so we'll get started. All right, so we're starting off. I've got some 26 gauge wire that I've cut into quarters, thirds, and all the way up to even a half because you want the flowers to be different lengths once you bind them together because sweet peas usually come in a cluster of um, three to four blooms and it's a vine so everything's going to be kind of stacking up so you want the different lengths of wire as you start. And then I use my bead pinchers to put a little hook, a little shepherd's hook like that. And then you want to take a little clump of your sugar paste, dip the wire in some gum glue, and then just insert it like that to make the center for your sweet pea. You don't have to make this in dried, you actually want it to be soft. I just make that first and then we can kind of set it off to the side. So then we're gonna use our sugar paste. I put a little bit of Crisco on my workspace to roll things out. Um, I think you can roll thinner and more consistently on Crisco than corn flour. And you want to roll this out fairly thin. Um, sweet peas are supposed to be delicate and pretty. So you can see about a millimeter. If you're using a pasta machine to roll this out, um, usually going down to a six or, or a five or a six is what I prefer to go to. But then we're going to take our one piece cutter. Yes, I know what they look like. Go ahead and cut that guy out. So this is a hibiscus veiner that I use. Um, I just think it gives a really nice, pretty uh, vein to the sweet peas. You want to vein one side. Let's give it a nice press. You want to flip it because you want them to match. So. Don't just turn it, you actually wanna flip it. No, wait, no, sorry, that way. And then the other side, like such, so that when we fold it up, the veins will match. And then take your petal pad and ball tool. And sweet peas, especially the domesticated ones, which is what this is based off of, are very roughly. And so I tend to go both sides to get that nice, like, really fluffy flower. And I want the, the head petal to curl back, and I want the interior petal to curl in. So I'm looking for the, the veining. So they'll go two different directions once we fold them up. All right. And so then comes my favorite part about making these, which is a very funny story. First things first, flip it so that the uh, head petal is facing the way you want it to. Go ahead and paint your gum glue from the split of the lower petal up to the base of the head. And then fold it, just like such. And so then this is the story of the man who didn't do the dishes. There once was a little man who decided not to do the dishes after his wife asked him to. And so he just went right to bed, but he took a shower first. So use that shower to get him wet, to put him in there. And then he got into bed, all happy on his pillow and snuggled up like so. But his wife was really mad because he didn't do the dishes and she decided that it was time for him to die. So step one, she smothered him and then buried his body in the comforter. So you turn and flip like such. You wanna make sure he's good and buried. I pinch up a little bit of the center because that's what sweet peas do. So you have like that. And then you want to bury him. Bury the dead man in your sweet pea, like such. 
But eventually, no one gets away with murder, and things will open up, and lo and behold, you will see the little man buried in the yard. Brink. And so sweet peas can be really, really open. They can be really closed. There's a lot of different methods for them. I tend to do a big mix of everything. I like them when they kind of get super, super roughly and open. But you want to dry them upside down on a rack for a little while just till they set. And while we do that, I'll show you how to make a bud as well using the same cutter. It's so versatile. So for the bud, everything starts the same way. You hook your wire and put your little, your little dude on it. But this time you're just cutting, from, you're not cutting the head of the cutter out. So just from the base to the tail, like such. And then we're veining. And then everything is just like with the top, except smaller. So you want to go ahead with the veins up. Oh, stop sticking. You want to go ahead and ruffle the petal so it curls in. And then you will fold the tail up like that, just as if you were doing a full-size flower. You just don't have the head petal anymore. Go ahead and give your man a shower. Tuck him in. Pinch up to make the center. It should be a little tacky on the back still since you've covered the whole thing. Just wanted enough just to stick them. Tuck in any unsightly edges. And once again, a little bit of gum glue on either side and bury the body. And then open it back up. And there you've got a little bud. And then just be sure to hang that one up to dry as well. And then I don't normally put calyx on my sweet peas. I find them tiny and fussy and I'm trying to do these quickly. Uh, so I just don't do them. But I do like to put pea shoots on. Pea shoots are my favorite. So I wanna split my light green floral tape in half. So you could do this with an X-Acto knife, but I've got this handy dandy little tape splitter so I like to use that. And so then just twist the tape over itself. My hands are super greasy, so it doesn't want to do this. There we go. I usually go for about three inches of length to get a nice long pea shoot like that. And then the end of your paintbrush Just wrap it round, keeping it tight, and then slide it off. And you can just kind of pull it to open it. And you got your cute little pea shoot. Activate the tape, and then you can grab your flower. And don't try to wrap this right at the base. Start lower, kind of wrap it loosely like that and slide it up so you get it right next to the base of the flower. And then take it all the way down. You could use 24 gauge wire if you want them to be a little bit more rigid, but I always find that sweet peas are, I like them to have a lot of movement, so that's why I use the thinner wire. And so you'll just kind of keep taping them like that. You don't have to put a pea shoot on every one. I tend to put pea shoots on about every, every two or three 
do a pea shoots that way when I put them together there's at least two or three on each cluster just because I think they're cute that's like my, my favorite part the little pea shoot and so then we're going to do that for the rest of them and then we'll tape these guys together